And you remember in Pergamum there was a place called Astepios. Astepios was the god of health, was a healing god. And his father was Apollo, definitely. And his mother was a mortal woman. And uh, what happens? Uh, uh, as Apollo was in love with, uh, with the you know, woman, and then the woman gets pregnant. And after a while, but what happens, you know, woman, before she gives birth, she was in love with another man. Mm -hmm. And then what happens, you know, the bird, crown, you know the crowns? You know, crowns in the past, they were white. They were not black, they were white. And the crown was the one who took that bad news to Apollo. He said, you know, your wife is with another man. Apollo gets very angry because he brings you know the bad news. He turns his color into dark. That's why they are they have a dark color today. Oh, it's a mythology, all right. The mythology. Mm -hmm. And then what happens? He finds the woman. He kills the woman and takes the as his pregnant takes the baby out. This was Astepios. All right. He also gave that uh, you know baby to the satyr. It was half a horse and half a man. And then he teaches all the secrets of the medicines and medication and healing to him and became god of you know, health. And then in that place, in Astepios, there is a story again. They were saying there was one family <coughs> and that one, the farmer was terribly sick, was about to die. He was sent away from hospital. And then it was a big farmhouse. One of his daughters was making the cow and she was taking that milk to her father on a plate. And uh, as she was on the way, someone calls her and she left that plate on a bench. And when she came back, she saw that there was a snake drinking that milk. And uh, at some you know, columns that you can see there are two snakes, at some you see one. And then she takes a stick, of course, it takes snakes away, and she gave that milk to her father. And the father, after, she, after he drank that milk, he recovers. And then <coughs> they said that the snake was drinking that milk, but also it was releasing that poison into the milk. And then this was an anti-poison for the mm. father. Oh, okay. And that is how he recovers. So then they started to use the poison of the snake mm. in medication for medicines, which is right. Also they still use, you know, mm -hmm. and then snake is used as a symbol of health. Mm. Okay. And it says there in the Greek, it says, if you don't have an HMO, <laughs> don't bother. <laughs> <laughs> in the line Please below, leave. it says Obamacare. <laughs> and your code, Don't forget this one, Hermes. Hermes was also another god. Hermes was the god of thieves. And he had so many different duties. Also, one of his duties was, as these people, as Greek people, as these you know, people die, as they're going to go to the world of Hades. Now they used to place a golden coin into their mouth, onto their eyes. So he was the one taking this, you know, the, the, this dead people to the bald man. And also another duty of him, he was also represented as a shepherd right here. And because you see the ram here, it's such a beautiful animal, you see, they've just sculpted here. These <coughs> details right here. <coughs> and they also represented as like a farmer, because farmers were the ones who walked all the way around, because they were the one who knows the herbs. So herbal treatment was important, and that's why he's depicted here as a uh, shepherd. All right. Let's continue, please. Oh, oh. 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 Before they were you know, starting these athletic games, at Olympic games, they used to worship her. Of course, for what? For victory. And this is also, uh, you see she is holding that 
reach in her hands as well. And it is also a kind of like Nike, or it's also mentioned in the testament as well as Nike, Nike, as a kind of catchword. Because you remember uh, what Jesus promises to the overcomer, overcomers. In Smyrna, she promises, I will give you the crown, the crown of life. It's also, that's why, you see, she, he uses everything that what the city says. Uh -huh. That's why it might have been influenced by this idea. Uh -huh. All right, that's why. Uh -huh. It is interesting. Cut part of the wall up there, too, where the thing is up on top of the hill? No. See, see what I'm talking about? Is that yes, a... I know, I know. That one, the bald one. This. Part of the city wall? It's no. Just a peak or something? No, just a peak. Nature for this. But what is that thing sticking up? Have a look at the other side now. And the, the round arch over there is Palio Fountain, was a fountain. And the building over here that we see, and this was the basement of the sons of Domitian. Now, Domitian is important, why? Because he was the one who sent, you know, sent John away from here, was the one exiled him. This was a temple of him. Ephesus was another city that was honored to have a temple for Roman Empire and dedicated to him as well. And this was the basement of that. And also the basement of that, when archaeologists were digging that site, they found lots of inscriptions, marble slabs with writings on it, and also most of the time these writings were in two languages. One was in Greek language, one was in Latin language, because the, officially they used to speak Latin, but also people used to speak Greek language as well. So that's why in two languages. And then when they were doing some digging, they discovered so many slabs over there, marble pieces with inscriptions on it. It was a great advantage for us because most of the things that we read also giving us some idea from those writings over there from that time. All right. And this day, these two places might have been used as a hospital. That's also what we know about it. And the other item at the corner here called the Sula, the Fountain of Sula, the memorial place of, you know, the... the Meminius, Father Nassula, the Meminius. And Sulla was his grandson, was a dictator. This building has actually, it was a four story. It was really hard. <coughs> and on the top of that, it was <coughs> the ancient pyramid. It was a tomb, a monumental tomb. And we are missing the top three parts. All right, top three parts are missing. The first part is over there. Around it, there are some leaves again with the, the ancestry of the relatives of Memenius as well, as you can see, and it's called as Memenius Merriman. And now let's have a break. He was going to wear shorts today. Oh.
And everything was available here. And as I said, the wealthy of the wealthiest people were here. And the other structure over here that you see, this was a slope house. It was a piece of the <coughs> article doesn't cover it, unfortunately, but I'm going to give some free time later on. If you want, you can walk. But you have to walk all the way up. That's how it's to visit. And then from outside of that, you walk down again. This house was also from 3rd century BC up to 4th AD. And in each house is worth like five to six hundred square meters. Five to six hundred square meters. And there were two stories. And even though they are from the second century, third century BC, and first, second AD, they all had central heating system, which is interesting. Central heating system. Imagine, you can get in. And each house had a courtyard in the middle. In the courtyard, there was a pool. And all the rooms were looking at that courtyard had sunlight in it. The ground floors were used by servants. It was used as, as a storage room. First floor for the house members already. And all the floors were co covered with mosaics, with wonderful mosaics that you can see some of them here. But the ones up there are very interesting too. And the wall with paintings from mythological characters. All right. And the slope house also. We, they think that St. Paul may have preached in one of those houses too, because what we know, you know St. Paul was preaching in the French houses, and Tyrannus was one of them, and we haven't discovered the house of Tyrannus yet. Alright, maybe in one of those, or one structure on the right hand side of that, some people think that it was the house of Tyrannus, but it hasn't been proved yet. And then, I will look at this beautiful structure here. It's a wonderful one. It's a small one. It's a very small. It's all these details. It's a small but richly decorated temple. Temple of Hadrianus. Oh. It's the same guy who built that wall between Scotland and England. And if you look at this structure now, straight ahead, you will see that girl over here with both arms open. And she is Medusa. Mm -hmm. Now you know what Medusa is, who she is, you know, she was the one that she's a certain object in the stone and she was the one again replaced on the lid of the tombs, at the houses, the places to protect the building. Mm -hmm. Alright. And then the other one, have a look at this keystone in the front arch. Mm -hmm. Look at this keystone. Tike, another goddess. Goddess of what? Goddess of fortune. Goddess of fortune is that one over here in the middle. And if you come closer, I show you another thing. As I was explaining you about the establishment mythology of the city, as I said, they believe that that's the city Medusa. was by And here, they have just covered all the story that they knew. If you look at the corner here now, you will see it at the right of the far corner, one small animal with a big head. This is the white boar. And the one on the horse is Androcolos himself. <coughs> and the one at the below, where the she has he has this nice city and she is painted white board. So the establishment mythology was started one by one over here. And as we continue to the other side as you see, and all other gods and goddesses are the great one. That she did a great job. We built a city. This was one of the governors. Uh, they always come back as equal as gods and goddesses. So that's why you can. This is not original. This is a plaster now. The real one is in the museum. Don't forget to take a look at it. All right? In this FS museum that we will visit in the afternoon. <laughs> Okay.